Well, in health news, the obesity crisis is getting worse in America, not better. 38% from 32% about a decade earlier. How does your metabolism actually work? One thing that gets talked about a lot or thrown around is the word metabolism. But the truth is, there are many things that we do not know about our metabolism. There are many unknowns, but let's talk about what we do know first. First of all, your metabolism, contrary to what you might think, isn't a central machine in your body controlling the rate of energy expenditure. It is within every part of your body and every cell. It is a collective system of enzymes that are constantly converting cells from your body into energy to power your body's organs so that it may continue to run and complete its task. The basal metabolic rate is a rate in which your body burns energy at rest. Even if you were bedridden or in a coma, your basal metabolic rate will still continue to burn. The body's major organs, the brain, the liver, the kidneys, and the heart, are half of the energies burned within the basal metabolic rate process. The other half is adipose tissue, which is the body fat, the digestive system, and muscle. So essentially, there are three ways or reasons that your metabolic rate would produce energy expenditure. Those reasons are as follows. The first and biggest, accounting for over 80% of your daily energy burn, is the basal metabolic rate. This is the energy production to keep your bodily functions working as previously explained. The second scenario is physical activity. And this accounts for about 10 to 15% of your daily energy expenditure. This involves all movements and actions taken through the day everything you would do is powered constantly by your metabolism. The third and final way in which to activate energy expenditure from the metabolic rate, which accounts for about 5% of the total daily burn, is the breaking down of food, the thermic effect of food. And oddly enough, that right there, what I just explained, is the only thing that any scientist can confidently state as fact regarding your metabolic rate because everything else about your metabolic rate is considered a black box, an unknown, or lacking a full understanding. For example, scientists understand that your body weight, fat tissue, and muscle tissue can dictate or are predictors of metabolic rate, but then for no reason at all, even with all of those points in body composition being the same, when getting older, your metabolic rate slows down, seemingly for no reason at all. Scientists are baffled by your body's metabolic adaptation to aging. In a biological frame, it doesn't make any sense that your body would do this, but it does. And this process starts as young as the age of 18. Another unknown is everyone's individual metabolic rate. As two people of the same height and weight and even same adipose tissue, muscle tissue, and age can both have drastically different metabolic rates. We don't know why. And it's nearly impossible to measure anyone's metabolic rate with precise accuracy. There are basal metabolic rate calculators online that can give you a guided estimate based on some of the predictors such as age and weight, but it may not be accurate. The most accurate tool that we have to date is a metabolic chamber, but even that isn't 100% accurate. Not to mention, it is a very expensive piece of equipment and is primarily used for research. One misconception that people have is that you can somehow speed up your metabolism on a daily basis, but essentially you cannot. You can try to maintain an adequate metabolic rate, but speeding up your metabolism doesn't actually happen, at least not to a degree that is significant enough to measure or sustain. Eating, for example, only triggers energy expenditure for a brief moment, nothing that lasts over the course of a day. 
The only proven method to slightly increase your metabolic rate is to build muscle and reduce adipose tissue. And this is only because when in rest, your muscles require more energy than adipose tissue. The darker answer for metabolic manipulation is that it can easily be disrupted in the opposite direction. You can easily lower your metabolic rate. This is called metabolic adaptation or adaptive thermogenesis. There have been many studies done on adaptive thermogenesis in which simply the process of losing weight creates an adaptation event within your metabolic rate that slows it down. And an even scarier thing to think about is that a study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition showed that after weight loss, all of the participants' metabolic rate dropped and even though they maintained their weight after a year's time, the metabolic rate did not change. It stayed in that dropped state. Another scary observation was when 15 contestants from the show The Biggest Loser were observed, they noticed that their metabolic rate dropped aggressively low. The contestants after the show were burning up to 500 calories less than they were before the weight loss. That's a small meal. Over the course of weeks, months, and years, that will create a harder struggle for weight maintenance. And six years later, 14 of the 15 participants regained all their weight. Some gained back more weight than what they had when they initially started. But astonishingly, their metabolic rate remained intact, still burning 500 calories less. It never increased, even though their weight returned. That's a scary thought, because what this can mean is that your body's metabolic rate seems to work on some sort of a gauge that depletes every time you lose weight, and if you gain weight again, you are working with a smaller caloric allowance. If you somehow lose weight again, it will reduce against you with little to no ability to speed it up significantly in the opposite direction. That is a scary thought. Why does your body do this? We don't know. It's one of those mechanisms in our bodies that continue to highlight how immensely complex our bodies truly are. There are theories, however, and one interesting theory is the body set point conspiracy. This conspiracy stems from the fact that your body has a weight set point and it fights to keep that set point stable. For example, if your set point is at 210 pounds, you will be fighting against your own body to reduce or increase the weight. It's a conspiracy of the body because an army of biological mechanisms trigger when you reduce weight away from the set point. Leptin is decreased. Leptin is the hormone that regulates hunger. This decrease increases your hunger. Satiety is decreased, making you feel less satisfied after each meal, prompting you to eat more. All that in conjunction with your metabolism slowing down. Strides are being made to attempt to figure out the unknowns of something so crucial to our health and society in a world where many people suffer from obesity. Solving this metabolic conundrum will be an achievement of historical significance. One thing that scientists are doing is studying a particular animal to try to derive answers as to what we can do to improve our metabolic functions. The hummingbird. The hummingbird has the highest metabolic rate of any species with blood sugar levels in their bodies that would be considered diabetic to a human. They carry that in their small bodies, but burn right through the glucose at a rapid pace. Their energy expenditure is primarily used to power their wings that flap at 80 strokes per second. This small bird may be our hope for a future in which there is greater understanding involving our metabolic rate which can eventually lead to solutions that will in no doubt save countless of lives. What's going on guys? I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown of how does your metabolism actually work? I wanted to shed light on what we actually know about your metabolic rate and the things behind it and what what's going on and and what we don't know and what we don't know is a lot as you can tell but you could rest assured that scientists and uh, researchers are consistently working towards finding solutions or figuring out these unknowns 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video and the format. If you have any questions, if you want to start a discussion, go ahead and comment down below. And of course, I want to thank my patrons for my Patreon. I'm going to put their names right up here. As always, guys, I'll see you on Wednesday for an FAQ. Peace.